Index funds versus mutual funds versus ETFs. Which one is best? Let's cash in. Finance for the everyday millennial. Hard charging solutions. We provide an accelerant in the journey towards financial independence. What's the difference between index funds, mutual funds, and ETFs? Each of these are different, but similar investment vehicles with their own pros and cons. We hear these terms get thrown around a lot, and actually, a lot of people use them interchangeably. For those who don't have a degree in finance, I am sure that this can be confusing. Heck, for those of us who work in this field, it can be a little complicated. So I hope this video helps break down what these vehicles are and how you might stand to benefit. Before we get started, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. My channel is all about increasing the financial literacy and IQ of the working millennial professional. And if you appreciate what we are trying to do here, the best way to show it is to hit the like button and subscribe so we can continue to produce videos just like this one each and every week. Okay, let's get right into it. I'm going to start with mutual funds because they've been around the longest. Mutual funds came way before index funds and ETFs, and the earliest known mutual fund was invented in the 1800s. They were created as a way for a bunch of people to pool their money and make investments together. Mutual funds offer three major benefits. The first is convenience. By investing in a mutual fund, you get to own a bunch of different stocks simultaneously. A mutual fund could have hundreds of different stocks in it, but you only have to make one purchase. In a world without mutual funds, if you wanted to have, say, 100 different stocks in your portfolio, you'd have to make 100 separate purchases, which means you'd waste a lot of time. But by investing via mutual funds, you get instant ownership in all the stocks the mutual fund is composed of. Only a lot of stocks all at once gives you diversification, which is the second major benefit of mutual funds. Diversification is a strategy that reduces your investing risk by spreading out your dollars instead of having all of your money in one stock. You spread out your money across many different stocks. That way, if one of the stocks in a mutual fund performs poorly, you'll be protected. Because each stock is only a small portion of your overall portfolio, mutual funds typically consist of around 90 stocks at a minimum. So they provide a lot of diversification that would be hard to replicate on your own. The third supposed benefit of mutual funds is that they are managed by investment professionals. So instead of finding stocks on your own, you have someone who is supposed to know what they are doing, picking the stocks for you. So mutual funds offer convenience, diversification, and access to professional money managers. But that doesn't mean mutual funds are the best option. Convenience and diversification are definitely good benefits but the problem with having professional fund managers is that they, they charge fees. Actively managed mutual funds charge on average an annual fee of one to 2% of your balance every year. So at 2%, if you invested $10,000 in a mutual fund, $200 of that goes straight into the pocket of that fund manager. And in the event the manager makes poor investment decisions and your account balance decreases, you still must pay 2%, which means a few things. You could end up with less money than you started with, the fund manager still gets compensated for their services, and if you find a fund manager who's done really well, the cost of fees adds up over the years to an extent that it could be cost prohibitive. Next, we have the index fund, Jack Bogle. The founder of the brokerage firm Vanguard invented a whole new category of mutual funds called index funds, and it completely revolutionized the investing landscape. Unlike traditional mutual funds, index funds are passively managed, which means rather than paying a fund manager to actively manage the fund, the index fund follows a fixed formula that eliminates the need for someone to make buying and selling decisions. 
The formula that it follows is based on a specific index. The S&P 500 index, for example, is a representative sample of the overall U.S. stock market. These indexes allow us to measure stock market performance in a specific sector based on market capitalization or some other metric. The first index funds were created in the 1970s and it mirrored the S&P 500. Since these funds simply buy whatever stocks are in the S&P 500, these fees are much lower because you're not paying for fund managers to make these decisions for you. The Vanguard S&P 500 Index Fund charges an annual fee of 0.4%, which pales in comparison to actively managed mutual funds. Quick note here, all index funds are mutual funds, but not all mutual funds are index funds. An index fund will clearly state that it tracks an index and it will specify which index it tracks. Always be sure to read up on how the stocks in a mutual fund are selected. A quick uh, giveaway will be the fees. Uh, another more probable way that most of us will find the difference is by doing a quick Google search for top five mutual funds or top five index funds and make a decision based on what you've read and in consultation with a financial advisor. So that's how you can distinguish between mutual funds that are index funds and mutual funds that are actively managed. Lastly, we have ETFs, which were introduced in 1990. They're very similar to index funds, except for one major difference. With index funds, you can only buy and sell shares once a day. But with ETFs, you can buy and sell shares whenever the stock market is open. I highly recommend people to purchase index funds instead of exchange traded funds because we should be investing with a much longer time horizon, excluding the need to buy and sell multiple times during the trading day. Another reason why I like index funds is because index funds offer automatic reinvesting. This makes it really easy to save and invest. The index fund also allows you to set up recurring monthly deposits and will automatically buy more shares for you every month. This is a complimentary feature and makes it a no-brainer for you to automate good investing habits. I hope you have a better understanding of mutual funds, index funds, and ETFs and what similarities and differences that they have. Thanks again for watching and remember, it's always a good time to cash in with cash in.